I'm speaking to Associate Professor Mick Bagg, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Pain Medicine. Hi, Mick. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Tanya. Now, the Pain Medicine Program winds up this evening. What have been some of the highlights for you? Uh, it's full of highlights. So, you know, obviously we had the, uh, the virtual symposium about the mysterious art of, of pain medicine on Friday that uh, was co-convened by or convened by uh, Noam Winter. Who's done an, an amazing job sticking with it, with uh, you know all the all the various ins and outs of this particular program, and uh, our plenary speakers, of course, um, Matthew Smuck and, and Eva Kotek have been been fantastic, and their topics are very very timely and relevant. You know, personalised precision pain medicine and this new entity of nociplastic pain, and it was uh, it was particularly exciting to see the delivery of our inaugural uh, professor Ted Shipton lecture. Um, the second named lecture in our program and uh, pays a fitting tribute to uh, you know, one of the giants of our faculty. So it's been, a, it's been a terrific program. You've been the FPM Dean for 12 months now. How has that been? It's, um, it's been different. It's certainly not what I was preparing for. Um, and, uh, you know, being in Victoria, uh, although not in Melbourne, um, you know, we've certainly... Um, been subjected to, to perhaps a bit more disruption uh, than, than a lot of uh, other areas in the country and in you know I think the extent of that on the college is just exemplified by the fact that it was only uh, literally uh, two weeks ago that I managed to get into the Dean's office for the first time uh, since you know since over 12 months and uh, that, that's been a huge disruption to college activities and Interestingly, from the faculty's point of view, actually, um, a lot of our major strategic projects um, didn't suffer greatly, I'm, I'm pleased to say. We completed the, the project for the procedures in pain medicine and, and got the pilot going, um, and that finished here, you know, pretty much exactly on time. Uh, we've been able to maintain our advocacy um, around the various state and, and national jurisdictions that the faculty covers. Um, we've been able to uh, liaise with the National Prescribing Service, NPS Medicine Wives in Australia, about um, our choosing wisely recommendation regarding medicinal cannabis, and, and, and we coordinated that based on the presidential task force of, the, of IASP. So there was a terrific international collaboration there that allowed us to leverage off their very deep and, and thorough research on the topic. And then, you know, by the same token, they were able to benefit from our clinical credibility and, and advocacy. So it was a really uh, excellent partnership and one that we really hope to repeat. Um, so there's been there's been a few other things, particularly the exams, the delivery of the fellowship written and clinical exams and the long cases have all had to be completely reimagined. And uh, you know, I'd like to uh, just pay tribute to uh, Juliet Whittington and, and Kieran Davis, the Vice Dean, who, who really were the two um, driving forces behind getting the exam to happen and delivering it in a way which really was, I think, um, such that our fellows and, and trainees got the exam that they deserve and expected. It, it, we didn't have to drop any standards. We had to find a new way of doing it, but, um, but our educationalists were very, very happy with it and, and our examiners and trainees were happy that it was fair. And, uh, you know, given the circumstances and, and, you know, we've been able to avoid what some colleges have had to do, which is, you know, completely defer their exams or, or run them in a way that, that maybe people had some question marks about. So, so uh, you know, those are, those are huge achievements um, for what has been a very, uh, you know, sort of a very unusual year. Um, so with one thing and another, yeah, lots, lots to keep us busy. <laughs> yeah, unusual is a really good way to describe it, actually. And what's to come in the final 12 months of your deanship? Yeah, so um, the other thing that I didn't mention that I probably should have during our, uh, as an achievement last year, was that we actually recruited and onboarded uh, a brand new executive director for the faculty, um, which is actually only the third such person um, that has filled that role in the 22 years that the faculty has been around. So it's a, it's a generational event in that respect for the faculty. So Leonie English was recruited and onboarded um, virtually. Uh, she didn't actually meet uh, myself or any of the executive in person uh, till after she was already in the job. And uh, so again, a very unusual way to start, but, but over the next 12 months, um, I'm looking forward to traveling around to our various regions and, and uh, national jurisdictions and in, um, introducing Leonie to the family. 
Um, and uh, that was one thing I said to her very early on was that she had to understand that, that pain medicine was a, you know, it was a slightly odd, passionate and dysfunctional at times, but mainly uh, very supportive and collegial family. And uh, she has certainly, um, she's certainly learned that that is the case. And she's looking forward to getting out to meet some of the uh, more far-flung cousins around the place now that she's met the big, big wigs. So, um, so that'll be part of what we do. And, and, and as we go to each state and, and as we go to New Zealand, we will be um, you know, looking for advocacy agenda items um, to represent um, over the, you know, the next year or two and also to build into the faculty's strategic plan uh, for the next five years so that we make sure that we're really listening to what our fellows are, are having to go through, where they're at with opioids, real-time prescription monitoring, what are the pressures on, on how they're doing their pain medicine and, and what we can do to try and advance the agenda overall at a state, national and uh, maybe even international level. So um, we, we'll be looking at um, the Better Pain Management Program and refreshing that. That was a, an unexpected uh, source of revenue during lockdown, the, uh, you know, the landing of the, the $1.2 million TGA contract, which has gone very well. Um, was was not something we had. It was something we knew that BPM was capable of doing, and and it was there sitting ready when the opportunity came along. So so we'll be trying to um, leverage off that success and and seek funding to make it a more sustainable and uh, maybe even recurrent funding to embed it in the training curricula of various organisations around Australia and New Zealand, so that. It, it, it truly represents what the faculty would like non-specialists to know about, about pain management. So that's a key part of our agenda. Um, I could keep going. We've got a big project in New Zealand where um, you know, our, our um, New Zealand National Committee is providing expert input into a complete redesign of the models of care um, in, in how pain management services are provided in New Zealand. And, and we're, we're very excited that the faculty was the first uh, specialist group that was chosen to work on such a project. And we're, we're led to believe there will be more, um, but, but they saw the need um, to do it for pain medicine because it is very unevenly provided across New Zealand and they saw uh, the opportunity to leverage our expertise um, at providing you know, telehealth and, and remote training and um, remote services and, and our adaptability, uh, and they were keen to work with us. So that's a, you know, a, major, a major achievement for our New Zealand colleagues. Yeah. So yeah, lots, lots, lots happening. <laughs> I was going to say, as you say, you could keep going and going. Thank you so much for joining us, Mac. It's been great to talk to you. That's a pleasure. Bye.